Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this plastic 28mm scale Panzer III kit from Rubicon Models. In the interest of full disclosure, this kit was sent to me by Rubicon for the purpose of making a review video. Making a video was their only condition, and I'll be treating it just the same as if I'd bought it with my own money. Okay, so you saw the cool art on the front of the box. The back of the box has a blurb about the Panzer III's and their role in the war. There's also a painted example, and a picture of the included decal sheet. Inside the box we have this instruction leaflet. I think Rubicon make the best instruction leaflets of any of the wargaming models I've put together so far. Very clear and well laid out. Of course there are also decals as pictured on the box. I've used these before and they're very good. And there are three individually packaged sprues. Let's have a look at those sprues. These are quite nicely detailed and very neatly moulded. I really like that the tracks are almost one single piece. Everything on the sprues seems to have minimal mould lines, which is really nice. Let's get to work. The instructions suggest to start working on the turret first, and so I'm building the gun assembly. I decided to use the 75mm gun to make a close support tank. The part itself didn't need a lot of cleanup. The mould lines are quite small. The end of the gun barrel is flat, so I added more interest and realism to it by drilling an opening and then cleaning it out with my knife, which I then moved out of the shot like a pro. Now after a tiny bit of cleanup, the rest of the gun assembly can be test fit and then glued. The part where the mantlet joins the turret can be left unglued if you want to be able to elevate and depress the gun. I've chosen to glue it into place. This back piece goes on to hold the mantlet in its position, and then you can glue this part across the top of the mantlet. I put it on upside down the first time, probably avoid that if you can. I then glued the gun into place, making sure that it's on straight, and then I test the assembly against the turret to make sure the gun is elevated how I want it. Now to build the turret. I started by gluing the upper and lower parts together. It's a good fit. I then glue on the commander's cupola. This part didn't quite slot on like I was expecting it to and I had to use a little bit of force to get it to sit right. Seemed odd, but not a huge issue. Next come the turret side doors. Pay attention to the instructions for these to be sure that you glue the correct door to the appropriate side of the turret. I then glue on the commander's hatch. This is two pieces, which is nice if you want to model it open. Unfortunately, the kit doesn't come with a commander to have popping out of the hatch. Not really an issue for me though. Now, because I'm a numpty, I did place the hatch halves on in the wrong order, and they wouldn't close properly, so I had to fix that. And that was a little bit fiddly, so do it properly the first time, okay? Next, the storage box can be glued onto the rear of the turret, which is simple enough. My final step for the turret is to glue the gun assembly on. No challenges here, just wiping away excess glue, and then it's done. I've omitted the smoke launchers and the shirts and Now we can move on to the hull. I started with the tracks, they're pretty good, though the outside tread part of the tracks does have a little bit of a mould line and isn't as detailed as the rest of the model. That's okay though, it's mostly not visible and people often hide the track details with mud anyway. I simply clean it up with my knife. I then glue the drive sprocket into its position on the front of the track set. The parts are shaped such that you can't glue the sprocket on incorrectly, which is always helpful. Then the rear part for the road wheels can be glued on. This makes a completed track set. At this point, the tracks are ready to be glued onto the hull, but I'm not going to be doing so. Rather, I will be painting them separately. It should make the painting and weathering a tiny bit easier. Now to glue the sides with the suspension gear to the sides of the lower hull. The parts are conveniently keyed so that the parts fit together correctly with no hassle at all. You can quickly glue them into place and everything should be nice and straight. Next, the upper and lower hull pieces can be glued together using these convenient poles that slot into each other. I do like this feature. So far, all the Rubicon tanks that I've built have had it. The parts go together really well. The next parts I glued on were these two plates on the rear hull. There isn't much to them, they just slot into place. The exhaust can then be attached. I'm not sure if I've quite positioned it correctly at all. I trimmed down the part in order to get it to sit a bit closer to the hull than it originally would have because I could see the cavity in the muffler too easily. Having the muffler closer to the hull eliminated that. I then glue this bar onto the right side of the hull. Not exactly sure what it is, but it goes there. Next, I drill out holes for the headlamps. There are indentations on the underside of the guards that indicate where you should drill. The holes I drilled weren't quite big enough for the lamp parts, so I widened and neatened them up with my knife. I test fit the parts and then added glue to fix them into place when I was happy with the fit. Next, I glued on the upper frontal armour. This is simple. I like not having to put together the tiny machine gun on this part. I then added both sets of spare track link to the front hull. This can of course be left off, but I quite like the typical look of German tanks with spare tracks on the front. And finally, I add the spare road wheels to the left side of the hull. The part that is cast onto the hull is part of the wheel, which is a little bit annoying if you want to leave the spare road wheels off, but I wanted them on, so it's no big deal. For me, that's the tank complete. 
There is of course the optional shirts and parts, and here I'm temporarily placing them on the tank to give a demonstration of how it would look with them on. Pretty good actually, I think. I'm definitely considering adding them still. That's it, build complete. Overall, I'm rather pleased with this tank. It was really easy to put together, the instructions were clear and helpful, and all of the parts fit together very well needing a minimum of cleanup effort. The low amount of cleanup needed means the model goes together in a very short period of time, though it did take me a while to get done owing to my being easily distracted. I'm not entirely sure what kind of Panzer III I have here, but I think it might be the ASF N that has a 75mm gun. I have heard people complain about some inaccurate details on this tank, though personally I couldn't really pick them out. At any rate, I'm not a rivet counter and I'm building this as a gaming piece, not a super detailed historically accurate model. And as such, I'm sure this model will look really great once painted up, ready to crush its foes on the table. To be honest, I'm not sure when I'm going to get around to painting this little tank, but I've got a few good ideas for when I do. I do believe this tank is one of the very first releases from Rubicon, and while it's pretty good, I would say the more recent models like the Stug are even better. I don't have any other Panzer III's with which to compare this model, but I would wager that it compares favourably to other Panzer III's available on the market. I hope this video was helpful or interesting for you. As always, I'd love to hear any comments you might have. You know where to put them. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks for watching. Farewell.